Welcome in everyone to another deep dive. This time, we're tackling fractional real estate. Ooh, fractional real estate. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about, you know, owning a piece of that dream vacation home or maybe even a city condo. We've got articles, expert opinions, even some real world examples yeah. to help us really break down what fractional real estate is, why it's suddenly so popular, and what to look out for before, you know, jumping in head first. Well, you know what's really interesting about fractional ownership? It isn't new. Really? No, it's been around, but how it's done and who it's for, that's what's changing so rapidly. Oh, okay. There's even some a bit of controversy, shall we say, around Picasso, one of the big players. Interesting. But we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that later. All right, so let's start with the basics. What exactly I is fractional real estate? So at its core, it means owning a portion of a property, okay. not the whole thing. Got it. So it's like, imagine owning a slice of a pie. Okay. You get to enjoy it, but you didn't have to bake the whole thing yourself. Makes sense. Okay, so then how is that different from a timeshare? Because I feel like I've heard that term too. Yeah, that's a great question. They both, timeshares and fractional ownership, involve sharing the use of a property. Right. But the ownership structure, that's what's really different. Mm -hmm. With a timeshare, you're buying the right to you use a property for a certain amount of time each year. Right. You don't yeah. actually own any of the real estate itself. Right. But fractional ownership, you get a legal ownership stake in the property. Got it. That means you benefit if it goes up in value. Oh, so if the property value goes up, the value of my share goes up too. Exactly. It's like owning a few bricks in a building. If the building's worth more, your bricks are worth more. That makes sense. And, and this applies to any kind of property, yeah. right? Not just like vacation homes. Oh, absolutely. We're seeing it with those luxury vacation homes like the ones Picasso does, uh, single family residences with companies like Fintor, and even, get this, good class bungalows and condos in Singapore through a platform called Streets Trading. You can even find fractional ownership for oil wells. Oil wells? Yeah. That's wild. Okay, so why is it so popular now now? Is this a pandemic thing? People wanting second homes, but not wanting the whole responsibility? The pandemic definitely played a part, but it's bigger than that. Fractional ownership, it offers a lower barrier to entry. Okay. You don't need as much money to start. Like on platforms like Stake and Smart Crowd in Dubai, you can start with as little as 50 bucks. $50, that's way less than I thought. Right, so it's not just for the super rich anymore. Right. And platforms like Fintor, they're designed for everyday investors, even those who aren't accredited. Interesting. So you're not just buying a place to stay. There's potential to actually make money. Right? right. With many fractional ownership models, you can rent out your share when you're not using it. Ah, okay. That's passive income. That's awesome. It's a good way to diversify, make your money work harder. It does sound pretty good. <laughs> Too good to be true, maybe. I'm guessing there are downsides too, right? Of course, there are always risks with any investment. We got to be real about that. For sure. For sure. But before we get into the downsides... Let's take a look at some of the big names in fractional real estate, the companies making it all happen. Sounds good. Mm. And speaking of making things happen, for our listeners who are looking for additional ways to diversify their income, make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. Okay. That's Brian with an I. You can get his free affiliate guide there called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. 10 Steps. It's over 12,300 words packed with information. Wow. All you got to do is put in your name and email, click the verification link, and you're good to go. Easy. The link for that is in Brian's YouTube bio. Easy. Okay, so you were saying the big names, the companies behind all this. Right, right. There are a bunch of companies making waves in this fractional ownership space. Like Picasso, right? They seem to be everywhere these days. Picasso is definitely one of the bigger players. They focus mainly on luxury vacation homes. They handle everything property management, setting up the LLC for each property, making it really hands-off for the owners. That sounds pretty appealing, especially if you're not looking for the hassle of managing a property yourself. Yeah. But aren't they the ones that have been facing some controversy? Yeah, Picasso has run into some pushback. Some communities see them as driving up housing costs. Ah, I see. They don't like the whole short-term rental aspect either. So it's not all smooth sailing with fractional ownership then, huh? Well, there are always complexities and challenges to consider, right? We'll dig into those a bit later in our deep dive. Okay, I'm ready to hear more about these key players. And hey, if any of our listeners are interested in diversifying their income, don't forget to check out BrianGarvin.com. Right. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is packed with, like I said, over 12,000 words of good stuff. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Just submit your name and email and you're good to go. Awesome. 
So alongside Picasso, who else is out there? Well, you've got Fintor. They're focused on single-family residences. Okay. A more accessible entry point for a lot of people. Makes sense. What about streets trading in Singapore? They're doing something with those good class bungalows, right? Exactly. Streets trading lets investors buy fractional shares of those high-end properties, like those good class bungalows and luxury condos. Oh, wow. These properties are usually out of reach for most individual investors, but fractional ownership, it makes it possible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's interesting how this model is opening up opportunities all over the world. Any other key players we should be aware of? Definitely. We've got platforms like Smart Crowd and Stake in Dubai. They offer fractional real estate investing with surprisingly low minimums. Wow. Technology is really making real estate investing a lot more accessible these days. Absolutely. And then there are companies like Real Vantage. A digital platform offers fractional investing across different asset classes, not just real estate. Oh, interesting. So it shows how fractional ownership is kind of, you know, breaking out of its traditional boundaries. Yeah, for sure. So it sounds like there's a lot to explore in this world of fractional real estate. But before we go any further, let's just remind our listeners again about a great opportunity to diversify their income streams. Yeah. Head over to BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Download his free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of info. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Just enter your name and email, and you're all set. Awesome. Now let's get into the benefits. Why should someone consider investing in fractional real estate? Right. What are the advantages? Give me the good stuff. Why should I be excited about this? One of the biggest draws is the affordability. You get to access properties that you might not be able to afford if you were trying to buy the whole thing. So it's like getting a taste of the luxury lifestyle without the luxury price tag. Exactly. Imagine owning a piece of a beachfront villa in Bali or a ski chalet in Aspen. Most people could only dream of owning those individually. Right. But fractional ownership makes it possible. That's pretty appealing. Right. And I'm guessing there's also less hassle involved since you're not responsible for managing the entire property. Oh, absolutely. Most platforms, they handle everything. All the property management, maintenance, even the bookings if you plan on renting it out. So it's really a hands-off investment then? For the most part, yeah. You can just enjoy your ownership and leave the day-to-day -day stuff to the that, pros. Okay. That sounds pretty good so far. What about the financial benefits? Is there potential for appreciation, income generation? Absolutely. We talked about it earlier. As a fractional owner, you benefit if the property value goes up. Plus, like we said, you can rent out your share when you're not using it. Passive income. So it's not just about having a place to stay. It's also a way to diversify your investment portfolio. Exactly. Fractional real estate can be a great way to balance things out, offer potential for growth and income. It all sounds amazing. But I know there have to be some downsides too, right? There's no such thing as a perfect investment. You're absolutely right. It's super important to go into any environment with a clear understanding of both the good and the bad. And fractional real estate, it's no exception. Okay, so let's talk about those risks. What are some things that potential investors should be aware of? One of the main drawbacks is you don't have complete control over the property. Okay. Since you're only a part owner, you'll need to coordinate with the other owners to make the big decisions. Like renovations or even like picking paint colors. Exactly. It can be a challenge if people have different ideas for the property or, you know, disagreements come up. So it's important to make sure you're okay with sharing the ownership before you invest. Absolutely. You got to be ready to compromise, work together with the other owners. Okay. What else should investors watch out for? Another potential risk is liquidity. Selling your share might not be as easy as selling a whole property. It can take a while to find a buyer. You might not get the price you want. Ah, okay, so it's not an investment if you need quick access to your money. Right. It's better to think of fractional ownership as a longer term thing. That makes sense. Yeah. Any other downsides we need to talk about? We also need to think about the fees involved. Most platforms charge management fees to cover, you know, maintaining and operating the properties. Right. And those fees can eat into your returns. So it's really important to understand that fee structure before you commit. OK, so we've got the good. We've got the bad. Now let's break down the evaluation process. How can someone figure out if a fractional real estate opportunity is a good investment? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. Evaluating these opportunities requires a lot of research, due diligence. You got to look beyond the fancy marketing and really dig into the details. Okay, so where do we start? What are the key things to look at? First things first, check out the company. Okay. The one offering the fractional ownership. 
Look into their track record, their experience, their financial stability, and their reputation in the industry. It's like checking references before you hire someone. Exactly. You want to make sure you're dealing with a reputable company that has a proven track record. Okay, so once we've checked out the company, what's next? Next up, the property itself. Okay. Location is key, just like with any real estate investment. Right. Is it a good location, good rental demand? Is it likely to go up in value? So we're not just looking at pretty pictures and amenities here. No, not at all. You got to think like an investor. Consider the property's potential to make money and grow in value. Okay, I'm starting to get it. What else are we looking for when evaluating a property? Don't overlook the property's condition. Ask for inspection reports. Look at the maintenance records. You want to make sure it's well-maintained. No big repairs lurking around the corner. Makes sense. So it's about being thorough and not just taking the company's word for it. Exactly. Do your own research. Make sure you're comfortable with the property itself. Okay. We've covered the company. We've covered the property. What about the financials? What should investors be looking at there? we got to dive into the legal structure, the fees, the projected returns. How's the LLC set up? What are your ownership rights? Okay. What are the exit strategies? And probably most importantly, what are the fees? Because those fees, they can take a big bite out of your profits. Exactly. Management fees, maintenance fees, transaction fees, they all add up. Make sure you understand how those fees work and factor them into your calculations. And how do we evaluate potential returns? Is it just about looking at the projected rental income? Rental income is important, but we got to think about appreciation too. Will the property go up in value? Are there any risks like changes in the economy or zoning that could affect the property's value? It's a lot to consider, but I'm starting to feel more confident about navigating this fractional real estate world. That's great to hear. Knowledge is power. The more you understand about fractional ownership, the better decisions you can make. And that's what this whole deep dive is about. Helping our listeners understand the ins and outs so they can make smart choices. Exactly. We want our listeners to be informed investors. Well said. And for those who are also looking at different ways to grow their finances, don't forget to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is full of great info. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. All right. Okay, so let's get into the legal stuff now. What are the key legal considerations for potential investors? One of the most important things to grasp is the ownership structure, how it's all set up. Most fractional ownership platforms use something called an LLC, a limited liability company, to hold the title to the property. Okay, so each investor becomes a member of this LLC. Exactly. And the LLC has an operating agreement. It lays out each member's ownership percentage, their rights, and their responsibilities. All right, I'm following so far. Why is it so important to understand this whole LLC thing? Well, the LLC structure, it's designed to protect the investors. It separates the ownership of the property from the individuals, limits their personal liability. So if something goes wrong with the property, the investor's personal assets are protected. That's the idea. The LLC acts as a shield. It protects the individual owners from legal claims or financial losses beyond their investment in the LLC. That's a relief. Are there any other legal aspects we should be aware of? It's crucial to read that operating agreement carefully before you invest. Okay. This document, it spells out all the rules and regulations governing the LLC, like how decisions are made, how profits are split, and how to handle any disputes. So it's like the rule book for the whole fractional ownership arrangement. Exactly. Make sure you're comfortable with everything in that operating agreement before you invest. That makes perfect sense. Are there any other legal documents to be aware of? It depends on the platform and the specific property, but yeah. there might be other documents to look at, purchase agreements, rental agreements, property management agreements, things like that. Okay, so it's all about doing your due diligence. Understand the legal stuff before you sign on the dotted line. Absolutely. Legal due diligence is key to protect your interests and ensure you're making a smart investment. Well, I feel like I've learned a lot about the legal side of things. What else should we cover before we wrap up this part of our deep dive? Let's talk about red flags. Red flags. Okay, I'm all ears. Like, what are some warning signs that something might not be right? One big red flag is a lack of transparency from the company. Okay. If they're not willing to share information about their history, their financials, or the details of the property, that's a sign to be cautious. So if they're being secretive, best to walk away. Exactly. Transparency is key in any investment especially fractional ownership. Okay, what other red flags should we watch out for? 
Be wary of overly optimistic projections. Okay. If they're promising you guaranteed returns or crazy high appreciation rates, be careful. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Exactly. No guarantees in real estate. Any investment that promises unrealistic returns, approach it with a healthy dose of skepticism. All right. Skepticism radar on high alert. Any other red flags we should be aware of? Watch out for high pressure sales tactics. If they're pushing you to invest quickly before you've had a chance to do your research, that's a red flag. So if they're trying to rush you, take a step back. Exactly. Never feel pressured to invest in anything, especially something as big as fractional real estate. That's great advice. I'm feeling much more informed now. That's what we like to hear. More empowered to evaluate these opportunities. We want our listeners to be confident and knowledgeable when making investment decisions. And speaking of empowering our listeners, for those who are interested in exploring different income streams, remember to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is packed with valuable information. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Awesome. All right, so let's shift gears a bit and talk about the impact of technology on fractional real estate. Sounds good. How is tech changing the game? What are the big advancements we're seeing? One of the biggest impacts is accessibility. Online platforms and marketplaces have made it so much easier for investors to find and invest in these opportunities. So you don't necessarily need those traditional brokers or agents anymore. Exactly. You can browse properties, compare prices, even complete transactions all online. That's incredibly convenient. Mm. What other technological advancements are we seeing? Blockchain technology is making waves. Oh, blockchain. Yeah, some platforms are using it to tokenize fractional ownership, mm -hmm. makes it more secure, more transparent. Tokenization. That sounds intriguing. How does that work? Basically, they create digital tokens that represent shares in a property. Okay. And those tokens can be traded on blockchain platforms, makes it easier to buy, sell, and manage fractional ownership. This is like having digital deeds to your fractional share. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Blockchain just adds that extra layer of security and transparency, makes it easier to track ownership and prevent fraud. That sounds like a positive development for the industry. Definitely. Blockchain has the potential to revolutionize this whole space, make it even more accessible, secure, and efficient. It's exciting to see technology shaping the future of investing, especially in real estate. Absolutely. And we're probably just scratching the surface. I'm sure we'll see even more innovation in the years to come. Well, that brings us to the end of part two of our deep dive into fractional real estate. Wow, time flies. We've covered a lot of ground, but there's still more to explore. Right. In part three, we'll dive deeper into that due diligence process give you specific tips on how to evaluate opportunities, and talk about what the future holds for fractional ownership. The future. I'm looking forward to it. And for our listeners who are excited to learn more and explore new ways to make money, don't forget to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, offers over 12,300 words of valuable insights. You can find the link in his YouTube bio, Simply enter your name and email, and you're all set to discover new possibilities. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll wrap up our deep dive into this fascinating world of fractional real estate. Can't wait. All right, so we've talked about what fractional real estate is. We've met some of the players, the companies making it happen. Now let's get to the good stuff. The good stuff. The benefits. Why should someone, why should I be excited about investing in fractional real estate? Well, one of the most attractive things is the affordability. You know, you get to access properties that might just be completely out of reach if you were trying to buy the whole thing on your own. So it's like you get a taste of the high life without the, the crazy high price tag. Exactly. Imagine owning, I don't know, a beachfront villa in Bali or a ski chalet in Aspen. Ooh, a ski chalet. Right. Those are properties most people can only dream of owning on their own. But with fractional ownership, it's suddenly a possibility. Yeah. That's pretty tempting. And I imagine there's also just less hassle involved. You're not responsible for the whole property yourself. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Most of these platforms, they handle all the, the nitty gritty, the property management, the maintenance, even the bookings if you're planning to rent it out. So it really is like a hands-off investment then? Pretty much, yeah. You can just kick back, enjoy being an owner, and let the experts handle the day-to-day. Okay, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. So what about the the money side of things, the financial benefits? Can you actually make money with this 
you know, appreciation, rental income, that kind of stuff. Definitely. As we touched on earlier, as a fractional owner, you benefit from any increase in the property's value. And on top of that, like we said, you can rent out your share when you're not using it. Passive income. Right, right. Passive income. So it's not just about having a cool place to stay. It's also a way to kind of diversify your investments. Exactly. It can be a really smart way to balance out your portfolio with the potential for both growth and income. It does sound pretty amazing. But I have to ask, are there any downsides? <laughs> because, you know, nothing's perfect, right? It's got to be right. a catch somewhere. You're absolutely right. It's so important to go into any investment with a clear understanding of both the pros and the cons. And fractional real estate, well, it's no exception. Okay, so let's rip off that Band-Aid. Talk about the risks. What are some of the things that potential investors should, should be aware of? What are the, the things that keep you up at night? Well, one of the biggest drawbacks is you don't have complete control over the property. Right. Since you're a part owner, you have to work with the other owners when it comes to making big decisions. So things like, I don't know, renovations or even just like deciding on paint colors. Exactly. It can get a little tricky if everyone has different visions for the property or if, you know, disagreements pop up. So it's really important to be comfortable with the idea of shared ownership before you jump in. Absolutely. You got to be willing to compromise to collaborate with the other owners. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Right, right. Okay, so what else should investors watch out for? What are some other potential pitfalls? Another thing to think about is liquidity. Liquidity, okay. Selling your fractional share, it might not be as straightforward as selling a whole property. Could take some time to find a buyer and you might not get the price you're hoping for. So it's not the best option if you might need to access your money quickly. Exactly. Think of it as more of a long-term investment strategy. Okay, that makes sense. Anything else we should be discussing downsides-wise? Anything lurking in the shadows? We've also got to factor in the fees. Most platforms charge management fees, you know, to cover the cost of running things, maintaining the properties. Yeah, sure, sure. And those fees, they can cut into your profits. Yeah. So it's crucial to really understand the fee structure before you sign anything. All right. So we've laid out the good, the bad, and the potentially ugly. Now let's get down to brass tacks. How can someone actually evaluate a fractional real estate opportunity? How do you figure out if it's a good investment or not? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah, absolutely. It all boils down to research, due diligence. Oh. You got to look beyond the the glossy brochures and really dig deep. So where do we start? What are the, the key things to focus on? Give me the checklist. Step one, vet the company. Okay. The company offering the fractional ownership, you know, look into their background, their experience, their financial health their reputation in the industry. So it's like doing a background check, kind of like you would for, you know, hiring someone. Exactly. You want to make sure you're partnering with a trustworthy, reputable company with a solid track record. Okay. Company vetted. What's next on the list? All right. Next up is the property itself. Okay. Location, 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 just like with any real estate investment. Right. Is the property in a desirable area, strong rental demand? Is it likely to appreciate in value over time. So we're not just, you know, looking at pretty pictures and fancy <laughs> amenities. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. Think like an investor here. You got to look at the property's potential to generate income and grow in value. Right. Okay. So what else are we looking at when we're evaluating the property? What are the red flags? Don't forget about the property's condition. Ask for inspection reports, dig into those maintenance records. You want to make sure it's well maintained, you know, no big surprises waiting to drain your bank account. So being thorough, doing your homework, don't just take their word for it. Exactly. Do your own research. Make sure you are comfortable with the property. All right. So we've looked at the company. We've inspected the property. What about the, the numbers, the financial side of things? What should we be paying attention to there? All right. Time to break out the calculator. We got to analyze the legal structure, the fees, those projected returns. Okay. How's the LLC set up? Yeah. What are your rights as an owner? What are the exit strategies if you want out? And super important, what are the fees? Because those fees, they can really eat into your profits. Absolutely. You've got your management fees, yeah. your maintenance fees, transaction fees. They all add up. Make sure you understand exactly how those fees work and what they mean for your bottom line. Okay. And when it comes to evaluating those potential returns, is it just about looking at the rental income? Rental income is a big part of it, but we also need to consider appreciation. Is the property likely to go up in value? Are there any risks like changes in the local economy or zoning that could affect its value down the line? It's a lot to think about. 
but I'm starting to feel more confident about navigating this whole fractional real estate world. It's not as intimidating as I thought. That's great to hear. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about fractional ownership, the better equipped you are to make smart decisions. And that's what this deep dive is all about. We want our listeners to understand how it all works so they can make informed choices. Absolutely. We want to empower our listeners to become savvy investors. Well said. And for those who are also interested in diversifying their income, you know, exploring different avenues, remember to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is packed with valuable info. The link's in his YouTube bio. Great resource. So let's shift gears now and talk about the legal aspects of fractional real estate. Mm. What are the key things investors need to know from a legal standpoint? One of the most important things to wrap your head around is the ownership structure, how it's all set up legally. Okay. Most platforms use something called an LLC, a limited liability company, to hold the title to the property. So each investor becomes a member of that LLC. Exactly. And the LLC, it has an operating agreement that spells out each member's ownership percentage, their rights, and their responsibilities. Okay, so I'm, I'm following so far. But why is it so important to understand this whole LLC structure? Well, it's all about protection. The LLC structure is designed to protect the investors. It separates their personal liability from the property itself. So if something goes wrong with the property, the investor's personal assets are shielded. That's the idea. It basically acts as a buffer, you know, protecting the owners from legal claims or financial losses beyond what they've invested in the LLC. That's reassuring. Are there any other legal things we should be thinking about? It's super important to read that operating agreement really carefully before you commit to anything. Okay. That document, it lays out all the rules and regulations for the LLC, like how decisions are made, how profits are distributed, and how to handle disputes if they arise. So it's like the the rule book for the whole fractional ownership arrangement. Exactly. You want to make sure you're completely on board with everything in that agreement before you invest. Makes sense. Are there any other like legal documents that we should be aware of? It really depends on the platform and the property. Sure. But yeah, you might come across purchase agreements, rental agreements, property management agreements, things like that. Okay, so bottom line, do your due diligence. Make sure you understand the legal side of things before you sign on the dotted line. Couldn't agree more. Legal due diligence, it's essential to protect yourself and make sure you're making an informed decision. I feel much more informed now, thanks to you. What else should we cover before we, we wrap up this part of our deep dive? Anything else you want to throw out there? Yeah, let's talk about red flags. Oh, red flags. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. What are some of the, the warning signs, the things that should make investors think twice? One of the biggest red flags is a lack of transparency from the company. Okay. If they're not willing to be open about their track record, their financials, the details of the property, that's a big red flag. So if they're being secretive or evasive, that's a sign to walk away. Absolutely. Transparency is paramount, especially when it comes to fractional ownership. Okay. What else should we be looking out for? What are some other red flags to watch out for? Be cautious of promises that sound too good to be true. Okay. You know, those sky high guaranteed returns, those ridiculously high appreciation rates, those are red flags. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's the old saying. Exactly. Real estate investing, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Right. Any investment that's promising those kinds of returns, you got to be skeptical. All right. My skepticism radar is definitely on high alert now. Mm -hmm. Any other red flags we should keep in mind? Watch out for high pressure sales tactics. You know, if they're trying to push you into a decision before you've had a chance to do your research, that's a bad sign. So take your time. Don't let them rush you. Exactly. Don't feel pressured to make a decision on the spot. This is a big investment. You got to do your due diligence. Great advice. Oh. I'm feeling much more empowered now, much more prepared to evaluate these opportunities. That's what we like to hear. I feel like I can spot those red flags a mile away. That's the goal. So speaking of empowerment, for our listeners who are looking to explore new ways to boost their income, remember to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Right. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's a treasure trove of information. The link is in his YouTube bio. Definitely worth checking out. Okay, so let's shift gears now and talk about how technology is impacting fractional real estate. It's a digital world, after all. What are some of the big advancements we're seeing? How is tech changing the game? Well, one of the biggest impacts is accessibility. 
All these online platforms, these marketplaces, they've made it so much easier for investors to find and invest in fractional real estate. So you don't necessarily need those traditional brokers or agents anymore. Exactly. You can browse properties, compare prices, even complete transactions, all from the comfort of your own home. That's pretty amazing. What other tech advancements are making waves? What else is changing the game? Blockchain technology is starting to make its mark. <sighs> Blockchain, the, the buzzword of the century. Right. Some platforms are using blockchain to tokenize fractional ownership. It adds a layer of security, makes things more transparent. Tokenization. Okay. okay. So how does that work? Break it down for me. Essentially, they create digital tokens that represent shares of a property. Okay. And those tokens can be traded on blockchain platforms, so it becomes a lot easier to buy, sell, and manage fractional ownership. So it's like having like digital deeds to your fractional share. Yeah. It's a good way to think about it. Blockchain, it just adds that extra level of trust, security, and transparency to the whole process. And that's always a good thing. Definitely. Blockchain has the potential to really revolutionize fractional real estate, make it even more accessible, secure, and efficient. It's exciting to see how technology is changing the landscape of real estate investing. For sure. And we're really just at the beginning. I think we're going to see even more innovation and advancements in the years to come. Well, this brings us to the end of part two of our deep dive into fractional real estate. We've covered a lot of ground today. A lot of ground. But there's still more to explore. Always more. In part three, we'll dive deeper into the due diligence process, those nitty gritty details. We'll give you some specific tips on evaluating opportunities, and we'll talk about what the future holds for fractional ownership. The crystal ball. And speaking of the future, for our listeners who are looking for ways to diversify their income, to explore new possibilities, don't forget to visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's packed with valuable insights. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Just enter your name and email and you're all set. Awesome. So stay tuned for part three, where we'll wrap up our deep dive into this exciting world of fractional real estate. Can't wait. Welcome back to our final part of this deep dive into fractional real estate. We've covered a lot of ground. We have. The what, the why, the who. Now it's time to equip you with the tools to actually, you know, do it. The how. Yeah, time to put all this knowledge into practice. Exactly. Let's get those analytical skills sharpened. Yeah. Learn how to evaluate these fractional real estate opportunities like a pro. Let's do it. Okay, I'm ready. Give me my investor hat. Where do we even begin? First stop is due diligence. That's always step one, right? Oh, fee due diligence. Thoroughly vetting the company offering the fractional ownership. So we're going beyond the, the fancy marketing materials. Too. Absolutely. We got to look beyond the surface. We're talking about their reputation, their track record, their transparency. So it's like, you know, checking references before you hire someone to manage your money, essentially. Exactly. You want to be dealing with a reputable company, somebody with a proven track record. Okay. Company check. What's next? Now we move on to the property itself. Okay, the property. Location, condition, rental potential. Those are the pillars of any real estate investment, and fractional ownership is no different. Right. It's easy to get caught up in the, the dream of a, you know, beachfront villa, but got to look beyond the surface. Absolutely. You have to think about the location. Is it in a good area? Is there rental demand? Is it likely to appreciate in value over time? And how about the condition? Has the property been well-maintained? Any major repairs looming on the horizon? Sounds like we need our detective hats on for this. Exactly. Don't be afraid to ask for those inspection reports. Look at the maintenance records. You might even want to consider an independent appraisal if those numbers seem too good to be true. All right, so we've checked out the company. We've inspected the property. What about the financials? Time to crunch those numbers. Okay. Look at the legal structure, the fees, the potential returns. How is that LLC set up? What are your ownership rights? What are the exit strategies? And probably most importantly, what are the fees involved? Because those fees, they can really add up. Exactly. Management fees, maintenance fees, transaction fees, all that stuff. Make sure you understand those before you commit. Absolutely. You need to know how they're going to impact your return on investment. Okay. So speaking of return on investment, how do we evaluate that? Is it just about looking at the projected rental income? Rental income is a big part of it, but you also have to consider appreciation. Will the property increase in value? 
are there any risks to that appreciation? Maybe changes in the local economy, zoning changes, things that could affect the value down the line? So it's a balancing act. It is. A lot of factors to weigh. And don't forget your own financial situation, your own risk tolerance. What works for one person might not work for another. Very true. All right, so before we wrap up this deep dive, any final words of wisdom for those aspiring fractional real estate investors out there? Here's my parting advice. Approach fractional ownership with the same level of seriousness, that same diligence as you would any other investment. Yeah. Don't let the, the allure of shared luxury, the promise of passive income, cloud your judgment. Right. Got to keep a level head. Exactly. Educate yourself. Ask those tough questions. And don't be afraid to walk away if something doesn't feel right. I love that. Walk away if it doesn't feel right. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Well, this brings our deep dive into fractional real estate to a close. Hopefully, we've given you the knowledge, the tools, the confidence to navigate this world of, you know, shared property ownership. It's a fascinating world. It is. It is. It's not a magic solution, but it can be a great option. For the right person. For the right person. And, you know, this is just the beginning. It's an evolving landscape. Who knows what the future holds? Imagine fractional ownership for, I don't know, art businesses, intellectual property. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are truly endless. Well, that's a great note to end on. It is. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into fractional real estate. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, happy investing, everyone.